deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty, or DALK, offers numerous intraoperative and postoperative advantages over full thickness penetrating keratoplasty, including decreased risk of draft rejection. Here we present a case of an 18-year-old girl with diffuse corneal clouding secondary to hurler shea syndrome. Her best corrected visual acuity had progressively decreased to 2080 in the right eye and 2063 in the left eye over 10 years. Preoperative anterior segment OCT showed limbus to limbus intrastromal mucopolysaccharidosis deposits. Given multiple deep stromal deposits that could potentially limit the efficacy of a big bubble technique, we plan for a manual DALK dissection. After marking the corneal center, a flaringa ring was sutured to the sclera using four 6O vicro sutures and affixed to the sterile drapes using a chemostat clamp to provide four point stabilization of the globe. The size of the recipient cornea was measured, and a 7.5 millimeter Baron Hesburgh vacuum trefine was carefully centered and used to trephonate about 50% stromal depth. Using a sharp mini crescent blade, a lamellar dissection plan was started at the base of the trephination. A semi-sharp dork dissection spatula was then used to di continue the, the, the lamellar dissection within the same plane, generally about 50 to 75 percent stromal depth. Dissection was first continued circumferentially along the periphery, counterclockwise in this case. Guarded tan dalk scissors were used to cleanly cut the dissected tissue flush along the trephonated rim. Care was taken to undermine at least one millimeter past the trephonated edge of the host cornea within the same lamellar dissection plane to facilitate a smooth recipient edge and subsequent graft suturing. The process of lamellar dissection circumfer circumferentially along the periphery, followed by cutting the dissected tissue along the trephonated rim, was continued for about 180 to 270 degrees, until significant traction from the residual adherent central stromal tissue was noted. At this time, careful lamellar dissection was performed through the central cornea, applying upward traction on the released peripheral corneal tissue in order to maintain dissection within the same plane. The stromal cap was then cut flush along the trephonated rim once the central stromal dissection was complete and the peripheral edge was freed. Using 0.10 Pierce Calibri fine tooth forceps to grasp the resultant ridge of stromal tissue where the first stromal cap had been amputated, a second and deeper lamellar dissection plane was started. Similar lamellar dissection was performed in this deeper plane circumferentially along the periphery, using dog scissors to cut along the trephonated rim. Once enough of the peripheral stromal tissue had been released, the remaining stroma could be peeled gently across the central cornea in this deeper plane. Any highly adherent areas of deep stromal scarring or deposits that did not peel easily could be dissected off using the sharp mini crescent blade in order to prevent excess tractional force to the residual posterior stromal lamellae, in order to prevent decimate membrane rupture. The residual stromal cap was then amputated flush along the trephonated rim. Intraoperative anterior segment OCT was used to confirm a residual hydrated stromal bed of less than 100 microns. After trephonating a 7.75 millimeter donor corneal button and removing the decimate membrane and endothelium, the graft was sutured into position using interrupted 10 nylon sutures. Care was taken to ensure good graft coast junction apposition with no graft override. A bandage contact lens was placed and the postoperative day one anterior segment OCT confirms the flat graft profile due to manual compaction of the posterior lamella. This case illustrates a manual dog technique using a spiraling layer-by-layer -layer lamellar dissection in order to limit risk of perforation while achieving adequate dissection depth. In some cases with deep stromal scarring or deposits, as well as generally in pediatric patients, a big bubble technique may increase risk for perforation due to poor visualization, adherent posterior stromal bands, and difficulty injecting the air bubble in the predecimate plane. Intraoperative intersegment OCT is useful to confirm the residual stromal bed thickness with an ideal target of less than 120 microns. This should further compact about 30% postoperative. Relatively.